uh, Tuesday, it, it is. It is on Tuesday, and uh, much welcome as we go through our devotion this morning. I would like us to start our devotion by a word of prayer. Let's believe as we pray. Lord, in, in your hands, we place ourselves because that is the safest place for us, oh God, this morning. Lord, we call upon your name this early morning as we join with other living things, giving you glory and praise. This morning, Lord, your faithfulness is known to us, for we know that, Lord, it wasn't a must that we see the day, but through your grace, Lord, here we are, also ready to listen from you. Now speak to each and every one of us, your servants, listen. This we pray as we start. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The month has been a blessing, friends. It's been a blessing because it's a month that we are thinking through true worship, true Christian worship. And yesterday, we were in a subtopic on how to make or how, to, uh, how effective we should be as we worship the Lord, as believers, as we worship the Lord as his disciples, effective, true Christian worship. That is what we are talking about. And so yesterday we were saying that for us to be effective in our worship of the Lord, then uh, we have to be people who are devoted to him, people who pay uttermost obedience to his commands that he is teaching us each day. And so we continue with that momentous today, and we are seeing that... Uh, Besides a lifestyle of obedience, besides a lifestyle of devotion, I think for us to also be uh, effective in our worship of the Lord, love for others, a lifestyle that is characterized by love for other people also stands out because loving others, I want to believe this morning, that makes for that effectiveness uh, and, and that effectiveness and, and true worship of Christ the Lord because actually love becomes a very important important lesson that we learn from Jesus Christ if our love for others is uh, uh, questionable then we stand in worship of our God to be effective as, as we give our true worship then I want to this morning, just to say that uh, the Lord detests that. And so this morning, uh, as a part of lifestyle that we need to, to have within us, obedience and devotion, yes, but also love for other people. Love for other people is very, very important. Because, because uh, you see, Christ requires that, uh, he, he, he requires that as we go before him to worship him, we are also people who are checking on, on how we care for, for other people. Because when we are divided, one with the other, one against the other, our worship before the Lord will not be qualified as true worship. So I therefore uh, think that worshiping the Lord in the truth and, and, and in spirit, as, as we started saying, has to do with genuinely also loving others and treating them as we would want them also to treat us. That in itself, that lifestyle of thinking of others and caring for them, of loving other people, that in itself would uh, permit us an opportunity to stand in worship, stand before the Lord and effect our worship of Him, making our worship true even as we seek Him. So. Lack of love and mercy, lack of love and mercy in our lifestyle as, as disciples of Christ is not pleasing to him at all. That is something that I have to repeat and repeat again. If at all love and mercy is uh, missing from, I mean, is a lifestyle that we are not in, then God is not pleased at all with us because that is the teaching that we have heard from him. Let us listen to what he says in the Old Testament even the book of Hosea, Hosea chapter 6 and verses 6. This is what we read. 
For I desire steadfast love, that is what the Bible says, I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice. The knowledge of God rather than burnt offering. God says that he desires steadfast love. He doesn't desire uh, sacrifices that we give. Burnt offering. He desires that we get to know, the, to have the knowledge of God. And the knowledge of God in this case is that he desires steadfast love. He desires steadfast love from us. So God hates he hates injustice. He hates oppression. He desires his disciples to fight, I mean, to, 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 to fight against injustice in our systems. And so that is why he is speaking about he desires a steadfast love. He desires one who has that knowledge, that understanding come from God. That person is uh, the one who would stand before the Lord and uh, give true worship because he's a person who is also thriving in the steadfast love of God. And so we read the theme of love in the Old Testament just as we also read it in the New Testament. Because in the New Testament, Jesus is saying that, uh, he's teaching that uh, reconciliation amongst his disciples is very important such that uh, first uh, the, the people should, should reconcile before you even bring a sacrifice before before the Lord. He says that he, for him, he is not interested in sacrifices. What he's interested in is steadfast love. Listen to what Jesus writes and tells us, what Jesus tells us in the New Testament, in the book of, uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, and verses 23 through to 24. So, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and uh, there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go first, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. This is the teaching of Jesus. So if you offer, if you are, you are, you are to do an offering, so if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there you remember that uh, your brother has something against you. Jesus says this, that leave your gift there before the altar and go first reconcile, seek reconciliation to your brother and then come and offer. Later come and offer your gift. Before we enter into worship, we should uh, intentionally resolve issues that may be standing between us and uh, our brothers, between us and our friends, amongst us in our families, between us and the people who are within our interactive bracket, we should first of all seek reconciliation with them. You know, that goes to the family, that goes to, 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 to our friends, that goes to people we interact with daily in our in, in our daily daily meeting places. That if we haven't sought for reconciliation, if we are living lives that are not lives that are seeking reconciliation, then God is not very much interested, even with the sacrifices that we may purport to be bringing before him in worship. Because true worship now then adds up to how you treat your brother, how you treat your sister, how you, I mean, how, how much you have reconciled to your family members how much people who are within your interactive bracket understand your reconciling self. Because if you are, if at all you are not loving, then or uh, the lifestyle of, of uh, showing uh, love to, to other people is questionable, then we still would not merit to stand to offer true worship before God. So pure and true worship also includes caring, caring for other people especially people who are in need. That love crosses over even to those who are in need around us and whom we see. You know, we are not only called upon to stand for justice, but it, we should also accompany that with action, such that uh, James, is, uh, James tells us this, as, as I bring this to, to a close, in the book of James chapter 1. James chapter 1 and verses 27. 
This is what we read from James. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and, and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. The, 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 the religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself from unstained, oneself unstained from, from the world. So that is what we are saying, that we are also called upon to take action, taking action upon those things that we see around us, care that we ought to give. We are not only going to fight for justice for that widow, for that orphan, but we must also stand practically with them. We must show, live, people, we must be people of action. We have to show and uh, take action against those things that we see around us. That is what the Word of God teaches us. And so we are saying that caring for, for people who are in need adds up into, into loving them. And if we can do that, then we are talking about being effective in our worship of the Lord. Whenever we stand to worship the Lord, and our lifestyle is a lifestyle that also uh, would be understood in loving those people whom God has put around us in our lives, people who are needy, then we, you are getting it right with, with, with God. So as a disciple of Christ, we are called upon also to offer or to provide relief in uh, the situation of those who are within us or who are least within us we must offer, we must provide relief for them. May God bless us as we continue thinking through his word. So a lifestyle that is characterized by loving other people. That is what causes or allows us to effectively stand as true worshippers of our God. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, you have spoken to us. And we desire, Lord, to live lives that uh, fulfills whatever, Lord, you desire from us. We desire that we love one another. We desire that we be people who are caring, people who stand for justice and just, just for causes, Lord, in this life. That, Lord, when we stand to worship you, we will give you true worship. Thank you for speaking and ministering to us to, to this, this, this morning. For this we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Mm -hmm.